<laughs> Welcome to Comic Con. I'm Matt. I'm Justin. Kent's not here because he's in San so, Diego. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. We're going to get comics. We're going to talk about nerd stuff while we go to get comics. Because that's what we do. That's when we, we go, go to on get Comic-Con. Comics. Uh, I just got back from PAX East in Boston. Uh, it was snowy there and cold and a lot of fun. Three days of video games and board games and card games and games and games and games and comics. And not a lot of comic books, but the whole convention centered around a, a company that does web comics. So uh, it was fun. And for those that don't know, uh, what's the name of the? Uh, it's PAX. It's uh, the it's, guys from it Penny used Arcade. To be, right? It used to be hyphenated Penny Arcade Expo, but they're trying to remove the Penny Arcade branding from it so that one day they can phase themselves out of it. So the show is now just PAX. It has a life on, of its own, but it is owned and run by the guys who do Penny-Arcade.com. Which is a, a comic, so yes, is a is a comic. It's topical. It's it's appropriate. It's so nerd topical. What was the single coolest thing that you saw there? Um, probably the Oculus demo. They had the um, what's it called? It's a uh, Crescent Bay is the newest hardware that the uh, developers are using. What they call DK2 Dev Kit 2. Crescent Bay is the one after that that's closer to consumer version, but they're not going to release the another Dev developer kit before. Is essentially like the, the beta version of this thing, and there, it's a, it's there are games out there, but it's enough for a developer to figure out their resolutions and the control and everything. Mm -hmm. But um, and the, it, it's not going to change a whole lot, like how you program around a dev kit to final release. Um, so it's it's enough hardware for the developer to get their game. 99% of the way done and there are games that have like command line support where you, you kind of go in the cheats menu and turn on Oculus and play hmm. um, uh, there are full games out on the uh, Oculus uh, what are they calling it Gear VR which uses the same display panel but it uses a cell phone and a headset Okay. Um, that one they opened their app store last week so anyway Oculus uh, booth it was really cool that you could download. Um, they had a, a version of the guidebook app, which is what everybody, all the major conventions use for their show floor and booth list. Uh, they had their own version of the guidebook app, and you could go in there and reserve your demo time. And so we showed up, and we only had to wait about 15 or 20 minutes. And, I mean, I guess the line was like two hours plus if you just walked in and tried to do it. Um, really cool demos. They're all interactives. They're not, um, or they're, they're like... Uh, it's like an interactive movie. You don't have a controller or your hands in the game. You're kind of like, you're a camera that can walk around inside a scene. And some of them had some things like, one of them you looked in a mirror and instead of you seeing yourself, you saw this like floating mask that looked where your head was. So it was like you were a, a Greek theater mask and then it would morph and then it would be a, uh, you know, a gold sun thing mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, there was the coolest one was probably there's one where you're in a museum and a dinosaur comes around the corner and runs down the hallway at you and roars in your face Jurassic Park style and even though the there's no feedback in the in the rift you're like I swear to God I felt his breath on my face because it's just slobber and ah right in your face. Now are they uh, using like earbuds? Whenever uh, they, they have like a flip. Rift? They have a flip down headset so they can give you instructions and then they can close it. And, oh, okay. Um, the headphones were not super great, but they do some really cool stuff with positional audio where as you move around the scene as the camera, the audio also oh, sets cool. a sound stage. And so like if something flies past you, it goes whoosh and it sounds like it goes over your head. Um, the other coolest demo was at the end, there was an Unreal 4 demo. Um, the Unreal and that's the game engine that is yeah. just badass. Yes. And Unreal 4 has this really cool like materials ability where... You know, like they've got a hotel room simulation where you can look at the stitching on the sheets. Um, it supports materials that look real. So you like you can pull up a profile from Marvel and apply it to a wall. Um, wow. So this scene is set up with like a bunch of cybernetic armor looking cops shooting down a street at a rampaging robot. And the cops are kind of Halo-esque, generic video game guys, you know, with visors over them. Um, but the whole thing happens in bullet time and then the camera just kind of floats you down the street in slow-mo. And so you're watching these guys go, chur, 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 and individual shells are flipping, and the bullets are moving. So you're able to look at like these. And you can walk. You can walk around. They have like a four. You can the, dodge all the bullets. Kinda. Yes. So oh, like you, I look so down. So you're Neo. Basically. Oh, so they sweet. had you standing on a like a three. The foot. downside is that they built the Matrix, and now we're all doomed. 
yeah. to, to be there was robot a, batteries. There was a joke during the show, somebody said on Twitter, they are like, it'd be fun to just keep running up to people who just did, did VR demos and go, there's been a mistake. Hmm. You're still in the simulation, but it's going to be okay. We're going to get you uh, out. What is that? <laughs> what's that? What's the... Uh, the it wasn't. It was like came out right around. The, it's like the thirteenth floor. Thirteenth right? floor. That was the whole deal. <laughs> you stepped into spoilers. The oh yeah. Oops. You ruined a twelve-year-old movie. A yeah, twelve-year-old movie that no one watched. <laughs> spoilers. Um, so the cop demo, like you're floating down the street, and at one point a rocket propelled grenade hits this car and flips it and it goes over your head and I'm looking up and there's like sparks and glass pieces and you look as you float under the car and you can look in the windows and see the bad guy like he's got a tattoo on the back of his neck and he's flipping in slow-mo going Rrr. and it was the weirdest thing ever and yeah you know the, the resolution's not pure high def it's got a little fuzzy around the edges your eyes try and focus on things and it doesn't work the same way it does out, it, outside of the rift mm -hmm. but man it really disconnects you from reality you forget you're standing in a sound booth on a on a two by two square of rubber that's cool. in that moment um and i'm like so man this is gonna be cool because facebook is really because they own oculus now they're really pushing that maybe games aren't the only platform for Oculus and they might do interactive movies and experiences like that. Tony Tony Stark can help design his Iron Man. Yeah. And um, so because the big issue is that nobody settled on what the controller is going to be. So, you know, developers are like, well, the Xbox controller is probably the most well-known thing. Um, there's a company oh, trying to make on. a hand so, feedback so thing. The Xbox controller is the most well-known thing? It's probably the most common layout that you see huh. because it works on PC and a console. So, so like, window, like, it, when, when did that switch go on? I, I'm just kind of surprised. Windows that 7, it was baked in. Windows baked XP, in. there were drivers you could download. Got it. So for guys that are PC gaming, then it's also the thing. Everyone that's Xbox 360, and yeah, Xbox can, One. The Xbox One the, controller the is Xbox the, Xbox the same layout, right? Same layout, and there were adapters. Um, the Xbox 360, it went to USB, and that's when it started working easily. And there's a wireless adapter, and on the Xbox One, they're going to ship a wireless adapter later this year. So. And, and, and you, probably because of just Windows and the behemoth that is Windows is the reason that it was readily adopted everywhere. Well, and also most Xbox developers, the development environment runs on top of Windows, like the toolkit they use, so okay. it's easy to proof a game using the controller just plugged in, and then you compile your code and take it to the Xbox and go, oh yeah, and it runs good on the Xbox as well. I'm just surprised that there isn't some other, I don't know, the other, thing out there. The other cool demo, and I made a YouTube video of this, so if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, The Macro Geek, um, you can search for, Plug. you can search for Keep keep talking and you'll find the gameplay video from PAX. Uh, my friend Andy and I played a demo for a game and they said it'll be on the Gear VR and probably the Rift when it ships. Um, it's called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. And it is a game where you defuse a bomb in VR. So one player puts on the Oculus and they're sitting in a dark basement and the lights come on and there's a briefcase bomb on the table in front of them. And they're locked in the room and they have to figure out how to defuse the bomb. Well, the other player is their their support guy with the manual for the bomb. And so I'm sitting at the table with a printed manual and it is convoluted and uh, you know refer to appendix 2B all over it and my friend Andy's wearing the rift and so he can see the bomb and he's using an Xbox controller to like rotate it and select pieces of it to work on but he knows nothing about how it works so he's like uh uh, there's six wires. I'm like, okay, wires, and go to the wires section of the manual. If they're this color, then do this. If there's seven, don't do this. And and it's like three append appendices, and there's a there's a bit about what type of battery does the bomb use? See, a battery appendix. Oh, that's awesome. uh, if the serial number's odd, then, and so you have to talk through it. Is there a countdown the entire time yes. that you're doing it? Yes, you have five minutes on the, on the intro bomb, and it's got three modules in it, and later they add more modules, and they add, like, if you fail one, then the timer accelerates. Oh, that's and... so cool. It's like you're in every action movie with a... Except you could probably beat it in enough time that doesn't, like, automatically... We, we beat it with, just at one. like, 140 or 144 left, and... Uh, we were very happy that we did that. Movie trope number whatever, you know, cannot stop the bomb unless it's on, like, the final. It was a ga <laughs> Galaxy Quest. They hit the disarm button, and they were like, it didn't work, it didn't work. And it's because 
the, it the, never, the Thermians have never seen a bomb in a movie not stop at one. So even though they disarmed it, it waits until one and then it stops. Um, we played, I saw several developers who had games, um, what, what was it, Legend of Dungeons one? It's a side-scrolling dungeon crawler beat em up kind of game. And I already own it. Um, so their VR implementation, because it's a third person game, instead of going, oh yeah, you're the camera, or you're the, on the guy's head in the game, what they did was the game becomes like a playset that's floating in front of you in VR. And so you're still playing the game, but it's kind of holographically floating in a black room, hmm. you know, a foot or two from your face, and you can lean into it. So you're like, oh, is that, a, is that stair trapped? Is there, you know, is there an arrow trap there? And you can lean your head down into the simulation and look at it. Hmm. And it's really weird and surreal. So I, I'm excited about it. I don't know if Oculus is going to be the best one because... Um, Steam announced their VR headset and it looks really cool as well, but yeah, so, I, I'm excited oh, that um, technology in about two years is going to be just awesome. Um, we'll figure it out. There's a detour coming up here. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so Windows has theirs, or Facebook has theirs. That's the Oculus Rift. Then their Windows announced some sort of glass. Theirs like, is an uh, augmented reality, so it, it overlays that things was, into your environment. And that was announced on what? But that was on. Uh, uh, it was a couple. Wired it was like a, magazine, I think, it, had a, a thing on. It was about a month back. Different things that they're doing, and then who else is? Uh, Valve, who owns Steam, Valve has got one, and theirs is kind of cool because it has like this laser scanning ability to both find your hands in the environment and also to like hmm. put boundaries on the simulation. So like if the if the simulation like if I was playing, um, keep talking instead of putting me in a room that the level designer has made, they might be able to find the edges of my room and and just uh, kind of paint the oh, walls in VR. That's Valve. Yeah. So theirs has got theirs has got some pretty interesting technology. I know um, uh, Ben Kuchera and his guys that do a VR podcast, it's called Three Bins in VR. They're very excited about Let's Valve. Let's keep going down. Okay, let's go one more. Because... Uh, um, the other game we saw at PAX that we thought was really cool is called Super Fight. And for people who like Cards Against Humanity, um, you can't play that with kids because it's really dirty. So Super Fight plays in a similar manner. You have a black deck and a white deck of cards. I'm trying to remember which cards are which. One of them is people, and the other deck is attributes. And you, you draw three of each, you look at them, and you try and put together the best fighter. And so it's basically an organized version of kids on the playground going, Batman can beat up Superman because X or Y. Oh, okay. So, so um, it's got the same gameplay mechanic as Cards Against Humanity, only so you, without you, filthy, horrible things. Right, and there is a filthy, horrible thing add-on deck. I, I forget if they call it the adult deck or the not-safe-for-work deck. But there's <laughs> a, but you don't mix it into the primary. You, it's like a bonus card that you flip mm. over and everybody plays off of it. Um, and then they also have a nerd deck. It's like nerd and geek stuff, so it adds a bunch of sci-fi stuff and video game stuff. And there is a, um, there's like a places deck and a, uh, kind of a, a scenarios, randomizer deck. So like the scenarios deck, you might play a card like that says, and their butts are glued together. And so that might change the fight. So that you, you pick two cards, you put them down, that's your fighter. Um, if a modifier card makes you pick up more cards, you do that. Should I go here or should I go down? I take right. Okay. Um, so, like, for example, we played, uh, somebody played Gandhi, but he knows Kung Fu. Whoa. And then I played... But still not, not violent, right? So... I don't know. Uh, pacifist Kung Fu? Uh, pacifist Kung Fu? Soft hand technique? Lots of dodges. Um... If I use your mo own momentum against you, uh, and then I played uh, the Terminator riding a war elephant, and they were trying to argue that Gandhi was going to win that. No. I was like, no, the Terminator snaps Gandhi. <laughs> um, hey, does that dice company that's in town show up at things like PAX? Yes, they're there. Chessex. Chessex. Uh, do I want to turn here or go straight? I'll go straight. Okay. Um. So it's super fun game uh, that you both play your fighters and then you have a minute or so, whatever the table decides, to pitch why your guy would win. Is it voted then by... And then the table votes and gives the point to one player and the player who won, their fighter stays in and somebody creates a new fighter to take him on. 
him or her. The same fighter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's like if it, for at one point I I got a card that was me, and then the modifier the ability was but ten stories tall, and so it was ten story tall me, and I and my my solution to almost everything was I stomp on it, <laughs> um, and I was winning and until it was uh, something with a lightsaber. <laughs> I forget what it was. Um, at one point, my daughter played a demon-possessed car wearing a robotic exoskeleton. Pretty powerful. Yeah, you're like, yeah. that is awkward. It's a car wearing a robot suit. <laughs> and then I think I had literally... Well, I mean, that's kind of a I transformer, played, uh, right? Yeah. I I've, mean, but demon-possessed, so... Yeah, so that makes it worse. Um, I had literally insane clown posse... Uh, right, so this is wearing a robot musketeer suit. Yes. So we think that'll be pretty fun. It's a little bit pricey because it's like thirty-five bucks for the base deck, and then each expansion is fifteen. I uh, I told the vendor that they need to come up with some kind of bundle pack where you can buy it all. This so what did you get today? What oh, out? and we're back. <clears throat> we do this when we're not rolling. Silver Surfer. How's that been? Amazing. And that is a reboot, right? Or a new well, okay. new book. They it's, a, have... it's a new book. It's Dan Slott, who writes uh, Spider-Man, and Mike Alred, who did Ecstatics, Dead Man, and has that really old pop sort of style. Mm -hmm. And it's essentially Silver Surfer and then this new character, Don Greenwood. And it's light. That doesn't sound like a it's hero awesome. name. It's, it's just, it's one of my favorite things. And then what else? Uh, Marvel Man. So an old Alan Moore thing that they've been republishing by Marvel. Okay. I'm sorry, Miracle Man, sometimes Miracle known Man. as Marvel Man. Um, God Hates Astronauts. Which is video gamey, jokey. Um, very light and just insane. So it's all just pure insanity. I think it's like an artist going like, I would like to draw this today giant monster robots fighting each other and then there's just jokes make up a story to go with it i picked up legendary star lord i haven't read this book at all but some people are saying it's good and for my daughter banana guard academy which is an adventure time spinoff which is funny because the banana guard are a bunch of idiots um i like this cover though because peppermint butler's eyes and peppermint butler is evil we all know that lastly oh oh I, sorry it's the black silent black science by rick remender Matteo Scalera, and it is, um, if you imagine the television show Sliders. I love that show before they ruined it. Um, oh yeah. It's kind of like Sliders, only, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's a little bit more twisted and interesting. The, uh, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know if the, the, they planned it this way, but I always think of it like as like black magic, you know, but black science. So like, hey, we're... We're using this science, maybe not necessarily for the most righteous of purposes. And so you've got all these kind of nebulous characters that you're just not sure where they there was a, exactly stand. What was the other, um, man, was it Manhattan Project was a comic? I got it in a uh, oh, that indie, was the Hickman, right? indie bundle. I, I don't remember who did it. I, I got several volumes in a indie book bundle download, and uh, it was all about like an alternate earth where the Manhattan project wasn't just one project. It was a whole vault of, it was very BPRD mm. Hellboy kind of like everyone has a dark secret and all, none of these people in this project can be trusted and a lot of nefarious science, um, stealing people from other dimensions and making weapons out of things that should not be weapons. Oh, um, God hates astronauts has a character. Mm hmm Gnarled Win Winslow, who is based on Carl Winslow of Family Matters, the Steve Urkel television show of the 1990s. So it's that character, if his arms were ripped off and replaced by gorilla arms, before they were also replaced by giant robot arms. Like, imagine uh. that Carl Winslow is the same character that you've seen in, like, Die Hard and every other co movie where he played a cop. But at some point, something went horribly wrong, and he got... <laughs> gorilla arms, and then the gorilla arms were ripped off from a place with robot arms. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of gorilla arms, my daughter and I watched Megamind again this week, and that movie deserved to do much better than it did in theaters. What was Megamind? Megamind was Will Ferrell was a villain fighting... Um, oh, what's his face? Uh, the hero... It was Metro Man, and it was um, Brad Pitt. 
Hmm. And it was a CGI animated, kids animated thing. And it was pretty smart and funny for its time, but it came out like within a month of Despicable Me, which oh. just buried it. Oh, um, you got the, uh, well, what are the, 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 the minions? Yeah, and there's a minion in, in, uh, Megamind, but he is a he's he is like a, a fish bit. thing, talking fish thing in a robot suit. So he's just the bubble on top of the suit. And the gag is like his arms look like a gorilla, but it's armor. And I'm like, that would be an awesome cosplay to build a minion suit with the floating fish in the bubble. And... Oh, right, right. And then like have the cutouts in the chest somewhere. Yeah. Is that a parking spot? I I so Agent parking. Carter finished that wow, before I left for PAX. Right. My family lost interest and didn't finish it all. What? Uh, they were having some trouble staying awake, like not because the show's boring, but because I was watching it late at night. Um, but they both are like, oh, I, want, I want to watch the end of it. So they'll get through it eventually. Tristan was physically upset that that was the last episode. I, I felt like the last episode, um, it felt to me like they were really leaving it open so that they could do it again next year. Do more Agent Carter or something. That's the plan. Apparently they went from miniseries. It was successful enough that they're doing it. Are they doing a something full, full show or just more miniseries? Um, I don't know. I probably I'm, I'm okay with that format if they're like, okay, each one's going to be full story. I liked it. I felt like the first episode took a little bit to get exciting, um, but all the other episodes, I felt like the pacing was really good and something exciting happened in each episode, and there was enough spy stuff and action stuff going mm -hmm. on. Um, I was disappointed with what happened to the, the chief guy. Yeah, you know, it was good. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't expect it. And then I was like, oh, that's sad. Yeah, and then he got hit with the feels. Yeah, he was like, bit. I came here to be entertained, not to feel. You made me care about this the person that doesn't even exist. I don't think made he me, even exists made me, in the comics, right? I mean, there's not even so. an analog. You made me care about this guy who only really had a story for an episode and a half. The I'm rest sorry. of the time, he's just the guy who yells. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, they're like, oh, and he has a family and kids, and he cares a lot. Oh, now he's not here anymore. <laughs> oh, so um, I felt like Fair that enough. show was efficient. They got their plot done and where they needed to get. How many it episodes? Quickly. Like six, right? Six or eight? I don't know. Not but, a lot. But in, um, it shows me that jo that was Joss Whedon involved in that one. No idea. Because I, I mean, he Shield's like Shield. He's heavily involved in but i feel like they've learned the lesson of joss which is that if you plan for you know kill three, at least one character well you know. no i was just saying <laughs> if you plan for three seasons or whatever it's partly through they're going to cut your order and be like get where you're going and you have to do it fast mm. and i felt like this show was compact they knew they had exactly six or eight or whatever episodes to get it done and they got the job done and, and they stayed on track and so you didn't have any weird like clip show episodes or character plot lines you think that didn't anyone go anywhere actually yeah, do you think that's the favorite episode of anyone? The clip show? Uh, Community, maybe? Really? Okay. The... Did you ever see their clip shows? Because they involve clips that aren't in the show. What about, or the, uh... They made up fake episodes that didn't happen. Clerks episode two of the cartoon, where the I second episode it. was the clip show. The second episode was oh, the clip geez. show. Which is why it didn't last very long, but, you know, you gotta admire the kind of huevos of <laughs> just going like, oh. That's Kevin Smith going, yeah, you know what? It's just, it's just, oh, did you hear the rumor? What is the rumor? Kevin Smith as Modoc. <laughs> I don't know where. I don't know when. Like you're gonna CGI his head or like face scan him? I don't know. I just don't know. But that was the I... rumor: is that giant, Kevin Smith's giant head will be even gianter <laughs> in a, a Modoc body. But I guess my question for you is, if you had Kevin Smith as MODOK, where would you stick him? Like, you know, they, they've laid out, you know, kind of what we're going to see over the next Which couple of years. Which movie do you put MODOK in? And, um, do you do, like, the first 15 minutes of Captain America? Civil War, you know, have uh, Modoc's a classic Captain Wait, America. There's no villain. new, there's no new Iron Man's on the books, right? No new Iron Man's on the books. I don't think I would put him in an Iron Man movie because AIM and Hydra both are perennial Iron Man shooting a lot of guys in a base. Villains. Right, right. Would you make him the main villain for your television show for season three of Agents of Shield? 
now would you you know like where do you I think you he, I think he's a funny cameo in like an Avengers movie up down the line a little ways um man that, he, he would be a great like like how they do in the Spider-Man movies where they always have an obscure villain in the first five minutes get his head punched and then it's like it's he's he's the same guy you stick in the rogues gallery with the beetle and shocker Sand, man. It's kind of what Batroc the Leaper was and then yeah. Captain America. Yes, exactly. He's the guy that gets his ass whipped in the first ten minutes and then they just show him. So you don't think that Modoc's got the, the stuff to carry his own movie? I think huh? he's I think he's too weird. I think he has to be helping another villain, kinda of like Arnim Zola was and and Cap. <laughs> Do you think at Arnim the, Zola? At survives? least Arnim Zola was a giant mainframe this time and he wasn't like in somebody's tummy. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love every time every time Arnim I see Zola. a every time I see a picture of Arnim Zola in the comics, I think of Krang from Ninja Turtles. Shredder, <laughs> Krang's angry. He's <laughs> like had that weird voice. Yeah. Dimension X. <laughs> <laughs> he makes that like weird yeah. croak noise. Uh, uh, weirdest I, villain ever. And then in the in the newer animated series. It turns out that Shredder is one of those aliens. He's an Utah. What? Yeah. The, the way they kept bringing him back from the dead because he dies and he comes back and they're like, he can't be alive. We saw him die. It turns out he's an, he's an, uh, what are they? They're Utahns? I have no idea. He's one of the squid brain aliens that crashed on Earth. He was a prisoner. He crashed on Earth during the medieval era in Japan, like the feudal era, and built the, he, uses the robot body to not get discovered, but that's how he hid it himself as he posed as a human and became a warlord. And so that's why there's always been a Shredder and there will always be a Shredder and Shredder's unkillable because he's a robot and every time somebody tries to stab him, they just stick him in the neck or whatever. Huh. He puts a new suit together. So he was uh, he was like an evil Krang looking dude with a scar over one eye. And, uh, and then once the aliens know he's on Earth, then it turns into a big showdown between the foot and the aliens. My kid was really which version of the Ninja Turtles? That was is that? that was years ago, five or six years ago, probably. Huh. I don't know. Have you I seen the seen Ninja Turtles? That's yet? weird. I've seen like one episode. No, I meant the the, the movie. The oh movie. no, I won't see that. I don't want to see it. I heard it was really bad. Well, I saw it in the uh, the lending library. So uh, okay, if tempted. it was if it was free, I might watch it. Okay, I was at I was at Mega Replay, which mm -hmm. is a local game store or game and movie disc swap store, and um. And I was checking out, and they have like a if you buy five things, something's free. And I saw Green Lantern, the, and I had not watched it. And I'm a huge Green Lantern fan from the comics. Um, they had that Green Lantern live action movie, and, I, and it was like two fifty. And I was like, well, why not? It's free anyway. And I took it home, and I was like, I'll finally sit down and watch this. I mean, if I know it's bad, I, at least I can enjoy the parts that are okay. Right. And I mean, I tried to watch the. The, whatever the full length like non-theatrical the director cut and I got 15 or 20 minutes into it was like mm, I can't I can't do this it's, it hurts like how this childhood trauma be like daddy like what the what the hell what's going on this was not in the comic books I know of. Like, wait how has childhood trauma in these? his dad blew up on the runway in front of him and it, that's why it, and you're like, that's why he has no fear. Cause it's dead. Well, and then he pan he has like a panic attack in a jet at the beginning, and you're like, but he's the man. How's without the fear. man without fear? That's why he's a good choice yeah. for the ring. <laughs> like, it's like they combined um, Kyle Rayner's like abandonment issues because Kyle never knew his dad. If they hint that his dad's like a, uh, a hitman or a government operative or something, that he that, that that's why he disappeared. Huh? They've never explained. I don't know if they ever explained what happened to Kyle's dad, but. It was. I'm like, what? And I don't. I gotta go back and watch the theatrical version to see, because it seems like they may have cut a whole bunch of that and then turned it into just a quick flashback. But I, I got to where he found the the pod with the Abinsur. with, with Abansur and he got the ring, and that was where I sh had to shut it off. And I'm, I'm gonna go back later and be like Data with the. This is terrible. I hate it. Another one? Yes, please. Just keep doing shots of Green Lantern. So, if you want to watch a Green Lantern movie, pick one of the uh, animated ones. Uh, I believe the 
there's one called the Girl Knights, I think, and that one has um, Nathan Fillion as the voice of Hal. Nathan Fillion should just play Hal Jordan. Let's just delete that movie from continuity and start over. Wow. And they do have another one on the books for some reason. Uh, are they going to switch lanterns? Uh, I hope they do John Stewart. John Stewart's cool. I did not like how he was in the um, when Justice League was the animated series that was out. I but that's played. that's the reason you do John Stewart. Yes. All the kids that grew up at that point know that character as Green Lantern. Yeah. Do they do military John Stewart or architect John Stewart? I like architect John Stewart, but yeah. you know, I like that John's always been the most detailed of all of them. Like Kyle's are always crazy imagination machines, and like John's are always like efficient. Like I, I created a giant vise, and it's mechanically sound or whatever. Whereas Kyle's are like, I drew a giant mango robot. <laughs> Um, I didn't like uh, when my kid was into like after the Batman Superman Adventures or whatever mm -hmm. went away and it, Justice League was the cartoon in the animated universe their version of Jon Stewart almost never made anything with his ring it was always pew 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 he was either shooting lasers or just cutting things in half with it and occasionally he would make a dome or a, or a sphere or whatever and he was in that version he was the soldier he was the everyone get down make a make a ball around everybody mm. and uh, I don't know if that got corrected later on when they went to Justice League Unlimited or wasn't that the yeah, it was yeah. The series after I don't know if they branched out but I remember that first the animated movie was um, he wasn't very creative with ring and it was like it can make anything so make something pew 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 yeah pew, he was pew. just pew 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 <laughs> shooting aliens and at the same time all Batman ever did was throw batarangs their batarangs and right hook people. I'm Batman. Did you hear that uh, they're gonna do a spinoff from the Lego movie with just Lego Batman? Okay. <laughs> It'll be pretty fun. 